but somebody has to be in charge. So we argue as husbands and wives, who controls the money, who controls the kids, permission for this, permission for that, and do this, no, 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 and we get into these competitions as a husband and wife, and you can talk to somebody who's been married a thousand years, say, not me. And you know what you find out at the end of the day? They're still competing to see who's in charge. Well, you can compete until Jesus comes back, or if Jesus never returns, you can still compete. But there's one thing that you must understand is answering the question, who is the priest of the home? The Bible teaches that there is a priest of the home. Now, if you are religious, you'll say, well, the man is the priest of the house. And many churches and women believe that, but that is a lie of the devil. Say what? Say what, Bishop? A lie of the devil. Let me say it again. What, Bishop? Anybody who teaches that a man, just because he's got a gender of a man, is the priest of the house, is the lie of the devil. Don't get too excited, wives. Because in being a priest requires responsibility. And a lot of wives say, well, they use that religious upbringing. Well, you're the, you're the priest of the house because your gender is different than mine. You're the man of the house. Well, if my man would only become the priest, I'd be more faithful in going to church. I'd be more faithful in tithing and giving and praying and reading the word. And my man would be the priest of the house. Like I said earlier, the devil is a liar. Amen. Don't be singing that song, women. That's the song of the devil. Your man has nothing to do with how spiritual you are. Uh, don't shout me down now. Amen. Don't shout me down now. Amen. And many women use that. And then they, they, they bring the conviction of the man. And the man says, well, I, you're the spiritual one. Oh, no, no, says the wife. The Bible says the man is the priest of the house. Amen. Well, in the Old Testament, it was so. You have to be a, a, a born in the tribe of Levi. And, and you were a priest. And you worked in the tabernacle with the high priest named Aaron, who was Moses' brother. Yeah, in the Old Testament. But how many of you know we're no longer under that covenant? Amen. Come on, somebody help me. Amen. We're no longer under that covenant. We're under the new covenant. Yes, amen. Amen? amen. amen. So now God is asking you this morning, who is going to rise up, whether the husband or the wife, who is going to rise up in the name of Jesus amen. and pick up the cross That's right. amen. and die for the sake of the family become a priest in the name of Jesus Amen. well I'm sure that when you start talking about that subject then the wife says well you honey and the husband says no no you babe and you could probably argue about that for the rest of eternity but this is what my pastor taught me say his pastor taught him yeah dr. McKinney taught me this he said, Michael, if nobody's in charge, he says, the devil's in charge. Amen. Help me. Amen. He said, if nobody's in charge, he said, the devil's in charge. Amen. 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 So this is part two, and hopefully we can bring more clarification. I hope that this week you've been fighting like cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bishop, we've been fighting. Oh, we've been fighting about the money and this and that and this and that. No, no, that's not what the instructions I gave you last Sunday. <laughs> the instructions last Sunday from your pastor was, I want you to fight like cats and dogs to see who's going to rise up in the name of Jesus and become the priest of your home. Amen. Well, did you fight over that? Don't shout me down now. Don't raise your hand. We don't want no secrets now. Amen. Amen. Well, no, we fought about this and about that and about this and about that. We fought about this and about that. Did you fight about who's going to be a high priest in the house? Well, not really. Hmm. Smell me a skunk. Amen. I smell me a rat. Say amen. amen. 
No. If you're going to fight about anything, that's what you should be fighting about. The husband should tell the wife, no, I'm going to be the more spiritual in the house. And the wife, the wife should say, no, remember now, honey, in the New Testament, there's, no, there's neither male nor female. God doesn't look at gender. The wife says, I'm going to be the more spiritual. The husband says, no, I'm going to read the word more. The wife says, no, I'm going to read the word more. The husband says, I'm going to pray more than you. The wife says, no, I'm going to pray more than you. Amen. 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 I'm not talking about a TV program on TV now. Some of you thinking I'm talking about a movie. I'm talking about you. Amen. Not preaching about TV movies. This is about you. And there should be this competition between the husband and wife about who's going to be the most spiritual. Because God requires somebody to be the priest of the house. Amen. Now we know that Jesus was the priest in the order of Melchizedek. He's the high priest right now. Amen. There's no other. The Bible teaches in the book of Hebrews that there's no other priest. In the Old Testament, you had one priest, and then he died, and then another high priest, and then he died, and then another, and another. Paul says, there's no longer needs to be a change of priesthood. Jesus has become our high priest forever and ever and ever. Amen. Many people know him as Savior. Amen. So sad. Say, so sad. so sad. Come on, say it. So sad. So sad. Yes, yeah, so sad because they don't know him as Christ, and they don't know him as Lord. And they surely don't know him as priest. Amen. Fathers, how would you love for your children on your day of your funeral to stand up and say, Yeah, my dad was a provider. He provided tennis shoes and he provided clothes. He provided electricity. He provided all that. And then the next child gets up and says, Yeah, my dad provided shoes, electricity, and clothes. And then the next child gets up and says, Well, my dad provided tennis shoes and clothes and food and, you know, electricity. You know what the father would do in the grave? He'd start turning in the coffin. <laughs> He'd start saying, hey, I was more than a provider. Yes, amen. I was also a husband. I was also a father. I was also a deal and a son. Amen. And a brother. That's right. That's right. But that's what we do to Jesus. He's the Savior, and we stop there. That's right. You're doing him in service. That's right. He's more than just a Savior. Yes, amen. And we must get to know him as the high priest yes. who does intercession, the Bible says, for his Amen. body. Amen. So he's a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Amen. We've also said that Yahweh, say that's God. that's God. Yeah, that's God. Yahweh. Yahweh has always desired for his kids to be priests. Amen. Always. In Exodus 19, he said to Moses, I want you to be a kingdom of priests and a special people to me. And in the book of Revelation, John says, He has helped us to become a kingdom of priests. What is a priest? A person who stands in the gap and brings God, Yahweh, and men and brings them together. Amen. His desire has always been that. Amen? Amen. Give me C under point number two. Look at what Paul says in the New Testament. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, where there's neither. What? Jew well, I don't know, but neither Jew. I just sent $100 to Jerusalem. We should have sent them here to this church, dummy. Is Jerusalem praying for you? Is Jerusalem fighting the devil for you? Well, the men said that the Jews were God's people. And how about us? Say, well, are the Jews God's people? Yes! But so are the Mexicans. So are the Africans. So are the Iraqis and the Iranians. And the Chinese. Amen. And the Central Americans and South Americans and the Mexicans. It's no longer race. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. It doesn't matter if you make 150000 a year or a billion a year. Or you make minimum wage. There's neither slave nor free, and there's neither male nor female. Amen. Well, is that what you've been hearing? No. 
Now don't be a moron. Say, he said don't be a moron. Tell your neighbor, I need to Google that word. Because it sounds bad. No, moron means you're just ignorant. That's all it is. Moron means ignorant. Don't be a moron. Don't go into a lady's restroom and say, yeah, Bishop said there's neither female nor male. How you doing, sister? You'll find your ass in jail, you pervert. That's not what we're talking about. You still have to follow the culture of the day. But not when it comes to Father in the kingdom. Amen. The kingdom surpasses all culture. That's right. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. 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 Yes, well, praise the Lord. Give me point number three. The Lord Jesus has authority over all priests. The Lord Jesus as high priest has authority over all other priests in heaven and on earth. There's priests in heaven and there's priests on earth. And he has authority over all them rascals. He is the high priest. Hallelujah. Amen. A priest under point number three. Aaron was the first high priest under the law of Moses. Then there were 38,000 priests that served under him in the tabernacle. 38,000 priests under the high priest. Amen. How much sacrifice was in the tabernacle? They needed 40,000 priests to do it. Amen. And they sacrificed in the morning and in the evening. That's a whole lot of killing going on. That's right. Amen. So in the Old Testament, you had 38,000 priests under the high priest. Now we have a new high priest. His name is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is in the heavens forever. How many high priests, how many other priests, excuse me, are under him? Thousands upon thousands upon thousands. But he's the main one. Say amen. 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 You may see. The writer of the book of Hebrews states that the Lord Jesus is the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Who was Melchizedek? The first priest. Melchizedek was a priest before Abraham became a priest. The Bible says that Abraham, God hadn't changed his name. His nature hadn't changed yet. You must have your nature changed. That's right. So he called him Abram. So Abram meets Melchizedek after some wars with some kings. And the Bible says, Melchizedek blessed Abraham with wine and bread. The Bible says he was the priest of God. The Bible says that Abraham gave a tenth to Melchizedek. Of all the spoils he took from the kings. That's where we get the tithe. Say, oh man, don't talk to me that way. Church lady said, say, church lady? church lady? Yeah, not the one from Saturday Night Saturday Night Live. You're as old as me. Saturday Night Live used to have a character called the church lady. Oh, she was hilarious, but not that one. But a church lady said to me, well, I just don't believe that the Bible teaches that you should give 10%. I said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, somebody has finally seen the light. She said, what do you mean? I said, I can't wait for you to start giving 20 I can't wait for you to start giving 20% if you don't believe in 10. Guess what she said? Well. <laughs> Amen. So we know that in the Old Testament, the Levites were chosen because of the tribe of Levi. God chose them. I didn't do anything special. They were no different than the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Issachar. They were no different, but God said, look, the tribe of Levi, which is, which is you, Moses, and your brother Aaron, I want them chosen as high priests, as priests of the house of God. They didn't do anything different. God chose them. Amen. And that's how he chooses us. Doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. Doesn't matter if you're Pentecostal or Baptist. Doesn't matter what denomination you are. That's right. He chooses us. That's right. Because of his grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. So we know that in the Old Testament, uh, men were chosen out of the tribe of Leo, were chosen for the priesthood. Point number five, please. In the New Testament, say right now. Right now. Say right now. Right now. 
Amen. Now put me back on cam, please. You say, well, Pastor, why is it that a bunch of people then quote the Old Testament? They preach about the Old Testament. Well, you can use the Old Testament. And Paul said, it was written for us as examples. But we're no longer in the Old Testament. We no longer have to dress a certain way. Women don't have to wear long skirts. A man, a man of God said to me, do your women at church wear long skirts? And I said, no. He said, that's in the Bible. I said, what's in the Bible too? That man wore long tonics. Where's your tonic, you dummy? <laughs> no, he didn't answer that. Help me now. Amen. Amen. And all that stuff from the Old Testament. Well, you're not supposed to parade your hair. When Paul talks to women in the New Testament about live modestly and dress modestly, he was talking about there was many prostitutes in the time of that church, and they all dress. How do you think they dress? Well, they didn't look like Lupita. <laughs> no, they dress seductive and all that, and Paul says, look, don't dress that way. But he wasn't saying that if a woman does wear makeup and all that stuff, she is evil. That's in the Old Testament. In the New Testament. Next time you hear a preacher to preach to you, you better say, are you preaching the New Covenant or the Old? And you know what's happening now? Many are preaching both. The Old Covenant and the New and mixing it together. That's right. Good Lord, man. That is evil. If you mix the Old Covenant and the New Covenant together, then Jesus is not the High Priest. But churches keep on preaching it. Say, help me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Help us. Point number five. In the New Testament, a person, say male or female. Say male or female. In the New Testament, a person enters the priesthood by hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Notice I have a note there. You must be born again. All right? I mean, you must be born again. You must have His Holy Spirit inside of you. Amen? But once you do that, you can achieve a priesthood. You can become a priest. How do you become that? By not making mistakes? No. Aaron made plenty of mistakes. Paul was a priest. He made plenty of mistakes. Peter was a priest. He made plenty of mistakes. John the Apostle was a priest. He made plenty of mistakes. Abraham was a priest. He made plenty of mistakes. No, you're going to make mistakes. Amen. So what's, what, what, what differentiates you from that? What causes you to become a priest in your home? You're hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Amen. See, you can talk to your regular worldly person and you go, what's today? They go, oh man, today is Monday. I got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and praise the Lord, Friday. Oh, so today's Monday? Yeah. Are you already, uh, give me your mic, honey. Are you already hungry for Friday? Oh, I ain't talking to nobody in this house. None of you think that way, do you? No. None of you think, oh, Friday's here, praise God. Oh, none of you think, I'm going to get my check on the 15th. Wait a minute, you're marking September. And we're barely July. I know. Why? Because you're hungering and thirsting for what? Mula, dinero, oro, plata. Somebody said, well, I'm not thirsting for money. Thank you. Somebody said, I'm not thirsting for money. I'm not thirsting for gold. I'm not thirsting for plata. I'm just thirsting so I can go to Walmart. And what do you do at Walmart with money and plata? You buy things. Oh, somebody help me. Amen. Amen. No, you become a priest by hungering and thirsting for righteousness. In other words, God becomes your life and your source. You hunger. God, I ate of you yesterday. I need more. God, I drank of you yesterday. I need more. More what? More righteousness. More right living. Help me in Jesus' name. Amen. And those who hunger and
and thirst for righteousness will find themselves climbing up the ladder of spirituality until they get to a point. And God says, well, hello, priest. You're like, well, who are you talking to, Lord? I'm talking to you. Amen. Welcome to the priesthood. Amen. You've arrived. Now you stay there. Amen. You stay in the priesthood. A piece under point number five. Blessed are those who what? Who get paid on Friday? Huh? That's what people think. Well, I don't get paid Friday. I get paid once a month, and sometimes it falls on a Tuesday. Well, blessed are you who are getting paid every month. Oh, somebody help me. Tell your neighbor, I think Bishop had an argument with his wife. I'm going to say it. I think Bishop woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Say it. I think Bishop is a little bit constipated and he's all stirred up. No, I'm not mad at my wife. No, I didn't have an argument. No, I didn't wake up constipated. No, I didn't fall uh, and woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I had a burn. 